guys, what is going on? It's your buddy Deceptive here. And basically what you're seeing on the screen here is a HDMI capture line from my new gaming machine directly here to my encoding machine, AKA my former gaming machine. And yes, this is Heroes and Generals. And I know I did a video where I said I was not gonna play Heroes and Generals much anymore. And I, I've got one day left of premium, blah, 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 blah. And my green screen is messing up. Excuse the green screen, guys, behind me. It's been giving me a headache for the, like, weeks now. Well, anyway. <sighs> Cheers. Yes, I did dye the mohawk. Yes, it is now purple again from pink. And you know what? It doesn't matter. I dyed it pink because I dyed it bloody pink, right? Don't ask questions. Just do. Okay? Life's too short to stop being a douche. Okay? So just live your life. Anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what do I think of the new Adams update? Um, that's the one constant question that was asked of me during my live streams this week um, when I was playing Heroes and Generals. And frankly, what do I think of the Adams update? I think it is absolutely, fundamentally fucking amazing. Pardon my French. I really do. Reason being is the bolt actions, the semi semi auto rifles. As you can see here on Unknown Soldier, yes, I do have the Scout 2S barrel on it. Um, I actually got a quad feed with one, one magazine, two hits each. Pat, 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 bing. Last guy died as my magazine emptied out. And I put a new clip in. Shot the driver, the gunner, then the passenger, and then another guy bailed out. And as he bailed out, I just caught him right in the head. Bing. Um, I've noticed that some shots are not registering correctly. Um, like clear headshots, you see claret, you see blood, you see everything. And you even see their heads snap back as if they've been hit. And they just act like nothing happened. Um, but I think that's a net code issue. Uh, I think it's a server issue, so I'm not worried about that. Um, I think that the, the rebalancing they did to the assault ribbons is perfect it really is um especially the infantry assault ribbons where they've put the grenades at rank three when you first start playing this game the only map you're going to have is encounter and that is literally like Bomberman central you literally you end up screaming at your monitor why the fuck can you not just use your goddamn weapons you know and now the fact that the, they, they've buffed your semi-auto weapon so that it's on par with a bolt action right out the, the, the gate, people who are veterans, but by, by the time you've actually unlocked the bolt action, which has now been moved way up in the infantry assault ribbon, by the way, which is a bloody good idea because one of the things I constantly say in my streams is, why the hell is the first thing you, weapon you unlock is a bolt action? It makes no fucking sense. None. Makes absolutely no sense because bolt action rifles were kept in reserve for marksmen, for the squad marksmen. Saving Private Ryan is a prime example of this. Yes, it is a movie. Yes, some of it is incorrect. Yes, some of it is correct. The correct part is most, but most squads that had a second lieutenant actually. It was up to the second lieutenant if he could take either a secondary heavy gunner or a marksman. And he took a marksman, which was a bloody good idea because, as you saw in the movie, Vin Diesel got taken out by a German marksman. You know? Uh, Enemy at the Gates is another good movie. Uh, granted, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt that it is a movie. Um, there really isn't that many documentaries filmed in that genre. Uh, that I know of, at least, that, that are, don't have uh, Sherman tanks uh, with German markings on the side of it. I'm looking at you, uh, 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 the movie with Mark Hamill, uh, Big Red One. I think it's Big Red One. Could be a mistake on that one. Where Mark Hamill, a very young Mark Hamill, just, I think it was before Star Wars, or was it just after Star Wars? I think he's either just before or just after Star Wars, uh, uh, plays a, an infantryman and they're running from Sherman tanks with German markings on it. And one guy's yelling, they're Panzer Fours, they're Shermans. Still, um, there's also another movie where they used Stuarts as Panzer Twos, which was hilarious. 
Um, so, back on subject. The fact that the Grease Gun has now been bumped down an unlock, it was at rank 5, it's now at rank 4, I think is absolutely amazing. Yes, it is the crappy Grease Gun. Yes, it does have issues with its rate of fire. Yes, you can tweak it with a bolt or a lightened bolt or the right trigger, and it turns turns that thing into a beautiful hip firing monster. That leads me into the hip firing mechanic update. I think it's absolutely amazing. However, it can be abused. Uh, Ritu, for example, your point of quick fire. You can spot people running point of quick fire gold with Sturmgewehr 44s or MP40s or Machine Pistol 34s or Thompsons or Pepishar 41s or the 43s because they're not, you can tell they're not, because they, when a person's aiming at you, you watch their soldier bring their weapon up. And I'm watching these guys not even doing that, just looking in your general direction. And you know their crosshair is about the size of a gnat's dick. And they're just going, with no penalty whatsoever. And it's headshot, chest, headshot, headshot. Every fucking time. Every fucking, and they've got a scope on the damn Stone Give Air 44, but they're not using it. Why? Because they know the moment they aim, it's it's all over the place. One of the problems that I've had recently is with the bar, the brand new automatic. Um, some of the shots are going outside of my cone. Um, I'm not sure if that, that's been reported or not, but I borrowed one of my teammates' uh, Browning automatics, um, and I, 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 I did the whole lay down prone to reduce your recoil, and I did that. Whole bunch of Soviets was coming at us on the town map, laying down, pop, 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 kill two of them. Third guy was running at me, and I didn't have time to, to, to scope in, so I just tip fired, and I watched bullets go literally outside of my crosshair cone as if the barrel was a fire truck hose and there was no one on it. It was like I had an M1, M2 carbine. And that, that weapon's just spray and pray, hope you freaking hit anything right now. Turns to Thompson. Thompson's uh, 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 shot spread is just too, too ridiculous. Uh, you can't even use it at 50 yards, which is horseshit because the average combat range for a Thompson was 50 to 75 yards. You can't even do that now. Your follow-up shots aren't even anywhere near where your first shot was. It's it, 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 it's ridiculous. Um, I do like the fact that you have modified it, but the fact that you had to nerf submachine guns is just wrong. I think you should revert the submachine gun nerf back. Um, I know that the town map with all the foliage and whatnot is great, and I know you've also adjusted the B-line, which you haven't talked about during your dev stream, or in the vi the video, but on the B line on town, at B B two and B three before you get to cross the, the stone bridge to B four, B three used to have this little side bro garage broken roof thing. It's now been moved behind B three. Um, I believe that's to stop people from ambushing players who are just spawning in to B three spawn out in the little forest area or spawn into the building it's to stop people most notably tanks just splashing he endlessly into b3 stopping soldiers from spawning and trying to cross um i think that's a, a cool idea because now the soldiers actually have an area where they can spawn safely uh, however you still haven't addressed the issue of tanks being on the opposite side of the goddamn bridge just splashing he everywhere and racking up like a hundred fucking kills and zero deaths which is horseshit because we just can't get across that bridge. And none of us can actually divert and go down the sea line across the metal bridge because guess what? They're all on that side of the bridge too. So the, the match literally on the B line becomes a complete and total stalemate. So we've now got to wait for teams on the opposite side lane, on the A line, to actually, or the E line, to actually bloody push. And they can't because at E3 and E4, there's so much dense foliage. All the Germans do is hide inside a bloody bush, which, by the way, is physically fucking impossible, I might add. You might want to add some physics to some of those bushes to stop them from doing that. And just keep mowing them down, mowing them down, mowing them down. So the E line stalemated, the B line stalemated. And I understand that you're starting to revert some of the changes back 
on town on the town map which is what that mini 800 something uh 500 something meg patch was but ultimately you still have not addressed the issue of stalemating in those lanes even if you have tanks it's not going to help you even if you have fighters it's not going to help you yes the fighters can bomb the tanks on the b-line by the bridge but guess what they can't because you've got the, the foliage is so dense soldiers have to pop out to spot the tank which is too late because we've just been splashed and killed by he that has a mini nuclear blast radius i don't know who the hell designed the blast radius of the he shells but still so the soldiers can't get out to mark the tanks for the fighters to bomb them so again you're back to the stalemate issue again and even then all the AAA guns are on that side of the river or is that something you haven't bloody noticed yet so we're spawning a mobile AAA, which guess what? Gets destroyed by the bloody tanks on the B line because we can't kill the tanks on the bloody B line. Or worse, it gets killed by infantry on the E line because guess what? The jungle is too bloody dense. So if right now, I would say take the town map out of your rotation players. Not your Ritu, you can leave the map in. But I'm just, I'm just saying to all of my subscribers, to all of my followers, uh, on Twitch, trust me, just trust me on this, guys. Town map, click, take it out your rotation. Seriously, right here. Go to enter combat, staged. You'll notice I don't have town, mountain town, or forward airfield. I have factory, airfield, and the rest, but I will not add these three because, again, I'm going to explain why you shouldn't add them. Mountain town same issue as the town map which is the cobblestone bridge tank destroyers just like to camp right on the bloody hill right outside it so you can't cross that bridge okay so you go you drive like a hundred miles down the opposite line past x-ray and oh one and try oh uh, two sorry and try and go across that bridge but guess what you can't do that because there's tank destroyers and heavy tanks or godforsaken medium light tanks that are literally just camping that waiting for you to try and cross so you try and swim across the river only to get picked off by recons you literally have stalemated the match again it's these maps with the fucking huge rivers in them okay yes i understand that that was a core issue in world war ii but this is the thing ritu this is not world war ii you cannot accurately model world war ii because if you did you would add, add in the fact that the moment a tiger moved more than 100 miles its transmission would die or its engine would catch fire but you can't or the fact that if you shoot a tiger in one specific spot, its ammo rack would explode. But you can't do that. Same as the Sturmgeschütz. The fact that the Sturmgeschütz's armor was paper bloody thin and 50 caliber machine guns could actually penetrate it from behind. But guess what? You ain't going to model that now, are you? No, exactly. You're trying to do your interpretation of World War II. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you. If you are American and you come across Mountain Town, Ford Airfield, or Town, you are fucked. Okay? It's that simple. You're fucked. Unless you've got a bajillion Pershings who all know, who all know what the fuck they're doing, which is that in itself is a rarity. And again, that is something that Ritu cannot code in. And I'm not blaming you, Ritu. You cannot code in stupid. Okay? You cannot code in your matchmaker the abbreviation for stupid. You can't. You cannot do that. Okay, I understand that. This is why when I do live stream, I only stream in squads now. Why? Because they bloody listen. And guess what? My last stream, 17 victories back to back. Can you say the same? Exactly. Big shout out to Gamer8321. Big shout out to Warhammer2020. Big shout out to the Unknown Soldier. And Christ knows how many people who follow me in... Who, who, who team up with me and squad with me and listen to my commands okay it's that simple especially when you've got a guy who's bought his rank for his for his freaking second lieutenant and he's like oh i'm the highest rank here guys so you should do this 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 and this it's like do you even understand what the hell you're talking about yeah, you're sending our tanks through a dense jungle forest which we know there's enemy infantry in there with anti-tank weapons how many tanks do you think are going to make it out of this? Seriously, how many? Count them. How many? And lo and fucking behold, we lost all our Pershings, all of our Shermans, and all of our Hellcats. 
because of one dumb fuckner. Me, we had no tanks, none. And we held town by my, literally by our squad self. I told half of my squad, you camp B3, hold B3. End of. You hold, uh, sorry, Bravo 4. You hold Bravo 4. You do not retreat, you fucking hold. If they've got tanks, say so. Let our tanks know so that our Hellcats can come and take care of them. Then you tell the Hellcats to fuck off and stay hidden. It's that simple. Well, we held down Echo fucking 4. Yes, the little river with the little mini island that's way openly and exposed. I had two of my guys who are marksmen's in the tower on the cobble bridge with SP mines to protect them from infantry assault. While I and Warhammer with his bar stayed on Echo fucking four, defending it from base was from Zerg rushes. And all I had was my Thompson and my M1 Garand. And you know what? We fucking held for the entire match. Yes, I died a few times, but luckily for us, we had an APC hidden right behind Echo four. And Echo four did not fall. Bravo 3 did not fall. We fucking won. Especially when they started rolling up their Tigers, their Tiger 2s, and their Panzer 3s. We still fucking held, and we still fucking won. Because that's exactly what we needed to do. While the rest of our team went and closed the rest of the B line, and the moment the B line was permanently closed and stayed closed, I told my guys at B4 to head on back to Echo 4, then that's exactly what they did. One went into the into the, 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 the circle tower to help our recon. And two other guys came with me. And we held while the rest of our army marched across that across that river, Hamburger Hill style, just getting killed by German recons, and we were picking them off left, right, and center. To the point where they had to break and push back, and then we just started going through that far that, that dense forest, bit by bit by bit, slowly but surely. And the moment a German fired, we all focused fire on them. And lo and behold, Echo 3 fell, then Echo 2 fell, and they were down to Echo 1, and it was too late. Timer was up, we'd won. That's how we did it. And I couldn't be any more prouder of my entire fucking squad that day. I could not have been more prouder than my squad that day. Now, why am I telling you all this? Why, why, am, I, why am I explaining all of this to you? Because that sort of thing there, that sort of teamwork right there, you're never going to get in a public room. Ever. You are seriously better off, and I do mean this, finding some friends that you trust, having a team speak, and just playing with them. And occasionally, occasionally, inviting someone new into your group. And then running them through a trial by fire. That simple. As for the mountain town assault, as I said, the bridges are the ones that constantly get camped. Forward airfield. Oh, God. Everybody knows that the tanks start camping 03, which is the, the, the runway. You know that. They always do that, which leads on to the D-line. So, first things first, you need to shut down that D-line. There is no ands, if or buts. If there is a D-line, if you're defending, there's a D-line. If you're attacking, there's no D-line. But still... You have to close that D line to secure O3. But while you're doing that, they're too busy Zerg rushing X ray or Zerg rushing down the A line, uh, the uh, B line to. No, sorry, it's C line, down the C line. So you need to hold Charlie 3. But you can't because there's a triple A gun at Charlie 2. But you still just need to hold Charlie 3. And you want to know how to hold that? SP mines. I hate to say it. You take an SP mine. And you put it, one right on those boxes right by the window, and one right behind the window. So the first moron who jumps up there, boom, he dies. Son of a bitch. Jumps back up there again, throws a grenade or two, boom, 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 nothing. Jumps up, jumps through the window, lands, boom, dies again. Rinse and repeat. Stick, stick, rinse and repeat. That's one way to hold it. Another way is to have a couple of guys waiting by those boxes behind and between the building and the boxes and you listen you listen for motorcycles you listen for pedal bikes you listen you listen 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 while you've got a recon keeping an eye out in the cornfield the surround the flanking side cornfield because that's where light tanks and medium tanks like to go and even tank destroyers i've noticed lately they like to go down right around Char Char uh, 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 charlie 2 
and they like to use the cornfields to snipe, especially recons too. So you want your recons to be on counter recon first. You hold Charlie three. Once you've hold Charlie three, while the other lane's being closed, once that lane is closed, you tell your men, we're gonna hold Charlie three while you guys press on. And that's exactly what you do, you leapfrog. You take, you hold. Next squad takes, holds. You move up, take, hold. Before you know it, the lane is closed. And you did it safely and securely, and you all get to come home. There. Uh, that's why I don't have Ford Airfield currently right now. Honestly, because it's too easy. I hate to say it, it is. If you're defending, it's too easy. If you're attacking, it's quite hard. Depends on what lane you first start off on and what you've got for equipment. Um, honestly, I like the fact that, that in the new Adams update, they have also done, I've noticed a few minor changes as well. Um, to, to slight map tweaks, but still on factory, it there's still that lip. I think it's in O2. As you're running into O2, there's like this step. You have to moon jump like your Mario to get in there. Why can't you just put a simple ramp so soldiers can just walk in? Why do we have to fucking moon jump over that one doorway? Is it, 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 I swear it's just that one bloody doorway on the factory map. If you can just fix that, factory would be perfect, as far as I'm concerned. Um, also, you might want to reposition one of the AAA, um, the one in between 01 and 02, the one that's out in the open. Either put some sandbags around it, or shift it a little bit, because once a plane goes past your 3 o'clock, you can't engage him until he's back at your freaking 6, 7 o'clock because of the way the chimney and that forward building is. Why not put one in that forward building right next to the chimney? That would make sense. It's a higher up position, which means you get a better field of fire. And it also means you can't aim the AAA down at the infantry like you can with the one between 01 and 02. You can actually aim that sucker down and shoot at German infantry that are trying to come into the main doorway into uh, 02. I've noticed that. Uh, um, I, I've... I've I did it during my live stream. I was like, ooh, 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 that's a big no-no. Because I killed a couple of recon that were camping on the Brit on the the, the, the mountainside. Uh, I destroyed one I, I destroyed one guy's bike and I saw it and, and and then one of our recons lit him up for a second and I went ba 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 killed him. You know? And I did feel bad about it. Uh, I even I I, 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 I I even said it during the live stream I felt bad about it. But ultimately it's war. War is hell. We are war pigs. We get dirty, you know? So I'm just giving you a little couple of Feedback tips there, Ritu. Uh, as for animation quality, I don't know what you've done there, but for some reason, every time you get hit with a Sturmgewehr 44 and it kills you, your body goes flying forward like you literally got hit in the ass with a V2 rocket. There is something incredibly wrong with the death animations uh, uh, um, since the removal of the backpacks. Uh, also, you might want to take a look at the German paras um, because the German para model uh, it, it is very similar to an American trooper and the Germans know this and the Germans rely on this um, since the backpacks got removed. That's why a lot of German players wanted the bloody backpacks removed. In one game, I watched one German paratrooper stand next to three Americans and they were just completely fucking clueless till I walked up and shot the guy in the back of the head and they were like, what the fuck? I'm like, he's a German, you moron. And they were like, oh, they didn't even know he was a freaking German. And if he was, if they, he was smart, he could have just threw a little grenade or pulled out his knife, shank, 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 and got himself a little triple kill. But he didn't. He just stood there. Like, he's probably a streamer giggling at how stupid these three fucking mm, three stooges was until I walked up and went summary execution. Bam! Shot the shot him in the back of the head. You know that's one of the things I would like to see in the Russians is commissars I would I would like to see a commissar a commissar class I really would that would be awesome if you could like do like a general's unit only for like a commissar that increases the morale of your troops at the cost of sacrificing like a sergeant or something you know like you will fight yes sir you know I think that would be awesome because that was accurate that's what the Soviets did, uh, the Russians did in World War II they summary executed a lot of their leaders 
who uh, uh, were failing in their roles, in their leadership roles. So again, guys, this is my take on the Adams update. I think it's taking the game in a direction that uh, I think is fair, that I think is now starting to become balanced again, because I've noticed a lot of MG42 guys have to lay down now. They have to be prone. They have to be crouching to even get decent effective fire anymore, which I feel is about goddamn time, okay? The fact that an MG42 had to be carried by three people in real life, and you got one guy running around like he's Rambo, racking up kill after kill after kill, no, no, mate, seriously, same, same, the, the Browning Automatic could be carried by one man, uh, 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 um, which is why it was a squad, uh, a machine, uh, a light machine gun, uh, the MG42, the MG34, the MG34 was a vehicle mounted machine gun, it was actually carried in a lot of, of uh, um, bombers and uh, Kugelwagens, which is why it's on the Kugelwagen, um, as for a squad infantry weapon, it was an improvised squad infantry weapon. It was never actually truly carried by uh, uh, most German infantry, except for the Obersange Commando, uh, which were basically like the 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 um, uh, the SAS, if you will, of the German forces in World War Two. Um, and even then, most people who carried that, they had to be a minimum of like six foot tall, weighing like fifteen stone, and be pure muscle. Um, and even then they would get tired after about four miles of carrying the damn thing because it weighed about 80 pounds. Okay, and that's because it was made of stamped steel. Uh, MG42s, again, were carried by three guys. One guy carried the main main machine gun. Another guy carried just the, the, the asbestos barrels. And another guy carried just the, the magazines. And when they set, and, and uh, uh, the, the guy with the, the barrels also carried the tripod. And so when they have when they set the machine up, it was tripod, machine gun, unload, top loader, box, mag, barrel, slide in, close, load. Now how do I know this? Ex military. In that order. But most importantly, I think no wait, open, slide, dummy barrel out. Fresh barrel in, barrel slid, mag down, close, lock. Um, and it would be... If it was the 800 round per minute variant, it would be two four mags per one barrel. No. Yeah, two, yeah, two to two and a half magazines per one barrel. And, on, uh, and halfway through one magazine, the guy would have to stop, lift up the... the uh, 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 magazine catch lever which would then in turn release the spring which made the barrel uh, uh, mechanism eject and throw the barrel out the guy would have to reach in grab the barrel not burn his hand of course grab the barrel throw the barrel down on the ground let it slowly cool back down grab a fresh barrel slide the barrel in slam it go out, put it down bring and start the lever again and rinse and repeat but of course you don't get to change the barrel here in heroes and generals which i think is an actual bloody shame they should actually add that as part of the reload mechanism uh, which I think would be cool. Uh, but then again, a lot of people wouldn't use the MG42 anymore. Uh, that's the idea. Um, so, again, guys, what do I feel about the items update? Uh, I feel it's good. I think they need to add some more maps. Um, I know during the Devstream 60, they talked about a coastal map, which is basically just a redesign of the town map. Uh, again, stop rehashing old maps. Start making some new maps. Yes, I do have two maps that I designed uh, they're still in the design phase. I still haven't even tried to inject them into uh, uh, um, Unity or anything else like that uh, right now. Mostly because um, one of the p people who I talked to who helps me with Unity uh, isn't around right now. He's in college. Um, good luck with that, J-Man. Um, but most importantly, um, I've just been far too busy to do it. But this is my take on the Adams update. I think it's great. Um, I think they need to put more balance emphasis on the tanks. Uh, I'm sick and tired of getting into a balanced match, quote unquote, and there's like five Tiger Twos, and we don't even have a Pershing. Where's the balance? Or they've got four medium tanks, and I'm forced to use my M3 lead by myself. One versus four. Where's the balance? Um, and I also think that you need to re re rebalance the armor issue on the Tiger Two point blank range with a bazooka and it bounces 
no just just no you need to rebalance the tiger it's like you've made that thing 200 millimeter stick all the way around the tiger 2's armor was not that bloody thick okay trust me look at some bloody textbooks my friend and you will see that the rear armor on the tiger 2 was only between 60 to 80 millimeters which means my bazooka at 100 millimeters has over penned by 20 millimeters and i'm still getting either failed a fucking pen or impact angle too high and i'm parallel to the fucking thing there's no angle so you've you've in effect made the bazooka a completely useless fucking weapon same as your panzer shreks that you have all across the map and you keep using as the excuse to deal with enemy armor if you don't have an anti-tank hence that's why you see that i have a sticky grenade now and even then it's going to take four sticky grenades which means i need dynamite lover to actually kill a tiger too because you've given it godly amounts of hit points no biasm there and the fact that, that you're now adding the panther which means germany's going to have three medium tanks now no i'll say that again no if you add the panther you have to add at least either the m36 jackson tank destroyer for the americans okay or the super pershing for the americans to take place to t take the Pershing's place and make the Pershing a medium tank, which which it was its designation. Seriously, do some fucking research. The initial design principle for the Pershing was it was a heavy tank role, but when they realised it in the field, that its more primary role is a medium tank, and so they started designing the M uh, uh, M29. The M, uh, uh, sorry, the T29, the T30, the T32, the M103, the M109. They started designing heavy tanks before the Pershing even left the factory because they realized through field testing that the Pershing is not a heavy tank. It is a medium tank. So please, redesignate the Pershing its proper designated role. Thank you. And the fact that you're also apparently adding another Soviet tank. So the Soviets are going to get three mediums. America's only going to get... Well, let's see. America's technically got three mediums, which is the M3 lead, which is a fucking joke, because the recoil on the 37 mil gun makes a 70 mil, 75 mil gun go up like this. Either fix the freaking recoil on the 37 mil, or seriously reevaluate the M3 lead, because two hits from Stonker shoots, you're dead. Two hits from a Hetzer, you're dead. Two hits from a fucking Panzer III, you're dead. Panzer IV, you're dead. Seriously, either buff the hit points on the freaking M3 Lee, or seriously, you need to take reevaluate re the M3 Lee because it's sorely lacking. Uh, regular M4 Sherman, yeah, it's a great bloody tank, um, but the M4 Sherman had a gun stabilizer, which means it could shoot on the move. It's not correctly modeled in the game because you can't shoot on the move correctly with the M with the M4 Sherman. And that's not just from me driving an M4 Sherman. That's from a whole bunch of other players, even in your forums and on the Reddit, have said, you cannot shoot on the move with the M4 Sherman. You have no gun stabilizers. If you do, you haven't correctly modeled them. Uh, what else? Um, the Easy 8 Sherman. It's, it, it's a nice tank. Same gun that's on the Hellcat, so why did... And there's nothing. Why did it take five shots? Five shots plus from a Stuart to kill a Panzer 38 from the sides. Not just the front, from the sides. Or a Louche from the sides. Yet it takes the Louche only one magazine to kill a Stuart. Or a Chaffee. Exactly. You need to reevaluate a lot of the... The whole, the whole tank system needs to be reevaluated. it really does anyway guys um that's the adams update that's my take on it agree with me disagree with me down below with the like dislike ratio uh, leave a comment down below i greatly appreciate it and uh, until then guys keep yourself flying keep your enemies dying your cover commander is out and i'll see you on the battlefield my friends so remember stay sexy